Hey you, what's up? Ed Lover here, and in today's tutorial, we're going to be taking a look at some common photo extraction methods. Now, I'm going to be using several images for this, and all these images are from cgtextures.com. That's where I usually get quite a few of my textures. They have a lot of high-quality things. You're limited to 15 megabytes a day uh, with a basic membership, but uh, with the first uh, subscription level, you get 100 megabytes, and I've never needed more than that in a single day. So if, if you're looking for some high quality textures and other things like this landscape, uh, definitely check it out. That's uh, cgtextures.com. For this first extraction, I'm going to try to separate this land from the sky. And if I try to do that with the lasso tool, I'm not going to have a good time. And the magic wand will probably create a really messy edge that uh, will be a lot more difficult to clean up. And so I'm going to uh, use a different method that plays the advantage of how well this is contrasted against the sky. For that, I'm going to use a channels alpha mat. Um, first things first, I'm going to alt double click on my background layer, and that will convert this into a normal layer that's not locked. And then I'm going to come over here to my channels, and you see you have RGB and then red, green, and blue. And this is the full channels mixed together. So when I click on this, it automatically sucks these. But if you click on each of these, it turns to grayscale. And what that basically means is it's showing how much color information there is for that uh, particular channel. And so the closer things get to pure of that color, the lighter it turns. So if I were to come over here and grab my brush, make it bigger, and I grab, say, a pure blue and then I paint on this and I come back over to my channels and I click on this you see this is basically white so the purer of that color it gets the more white it becomes so I'm gonna do that and then I'm gonna take the channel that has the best contrast and create a duplicate of it so red it's not that great green and then blue. And to create a duplicate of this, you just drag it down to the new layer icon. And now I have a copy of this. And so anything I do to this won't uh, damage my original image. So if I just click back to this, it's, it's fine. But now I can apply adjustments to this particular channel that I've created. And we're going to create an alpha mask. We want the land to be completely dark and the sky to be white. I'm going to hit Control M bring up my curves or you can go to image adjustments and then curves and once again you can kinda see on here the land you can is kinda represented along this curve and you can see this nice huge spike here which is the sky so the lighter is over here the darker is this way and then to create a nice white mat all I have to do is just drag this top point past there and you see all that just turned white and now I want to really uh, amp up the contrast, so I'm going to drag this bottom left point. And you can see as I drag it, all that land just turns dark, and it preserves those little tiny edges along the mountain here. And it also gets some of the ones that are inside, so I don't have to worry about uh, cutting those out individually with, say, like the lasso or magic wand. After I uh, do that, you can see there's, there is a bit of white inside the mountain left over, but to get rid of that, all I have to do is come in with the lasso tool, make a quick selection, get most of that, and then my background color is set to black, so I'm going to hit control backspace, and now most of that's cleaned up, and to get the rest of it, I can just take a brush, whoops, and just paint in black. And this works similarly to what we did in the last tutorial with creating a mask. It's, it's essentially the same thing. We're creating an alpha mask that we can then apply to a selection for our image. So I'm just gonna come in here, clean up some of those little spots, and now I'm ready to work with this. I want to inverse this. I'm gonna hit Control i and now I can select my mountain. So anything white will be selected, anything black won't be. And I'll Control click on my blue copy and you see it's now selected and I come into layers and to create a duplicate of my selection I just hit control J and now that's cut out 
So as you can see, when you have really great contrast, um, using a curves extraction uh, through an alpha channel is really powerful and can save you a lot of time. So if I come in here and zoom in on this little tree, you see it's gotten rid of most of those um, edges. I'm going to go through a couple more of these real quick. I'm going to grab another one of my image images here. There we go. Uh, again, this is another image from CG Textures. I'm going to come over to my channels. And already you can see red, the red channel already creates a great um, start for the mask so I'm just gonna drag that down create a copy of it and then uh, real quick I'm gonna fill in the center here I'm gonna create a circle with the marquee tool and I'm gonna hit control backspace to use my background color to fill in that center and then once again control M and I can just drag this bottom left uh, pointer over and then the top and just like that, I have a pretty solid mask. Minus this little thing down in the corner, which I can very quickly get rid of. Control click, and then Control J, and already that's cut out. I'm going to grab another image here, and for this, we're going to use the extract filter built into Photoshop. And so I'm going to click on this filter extract. And once again, this is too big for the recording window. There we go. Zoom out once. And what the extract tool will let you do is uh, draw an outline around what you want to extract and then fill it in, and Photoshop will do the work for you. Now, sometimes if uh, extract filter doesn't get a perfect pull from the image, but if you're going to be touching it up or don't really need to worry too much about it, um, the extract filter can be a great tool to use. So I'm going to increase my brush size here by using the right bracket on my keyboard or you can come over to your brush size and increase it. I'm just going to go around the edge of this cloud. And sometimes if you can't use the uh, curves alpha, um, the extract tool might be a, a better alternative. So what you want to do is you just want to go along the edge you can grab some of this wispy stuff that's sticking out. Just come in. And then come around. And you want to make sure you close your selection. And then you grab the, the uh, fill tool and just click in this and you see that turn blue and now it's ready to extract. So I'm going to hit OK and then I'm going to take a look. And so you, you see there's some problems up here but I can fix those by going the, over them with an eraser. But for the most part it pulled a pretty clean extraction. I have one more image we're going to do one more uh, method for. So I'm going to pull that in here. And I have this building here and the curves uh, will definitely cause some problems because it's sitting with this other building here and over on this side so when I do the curves um, to the alpha it's gonna create a really difficult mat to work with so you have your marquee tools here and they're alright but honestly they're kind of a pain to work with if you make a mistake um, it can be difficult to fix your selection and so instead of using those, I like to use the pen tool. And the pen tools can create uh, shape layers for you if you have this first box here selected. But you can also create paths with it without having to worry about it filling in automatically. So if you click on the second button here, it just says paths. You get all the power of the pen tool, but without any of the shapes. And so you can create really uh, exact selections. And this building is a great example of uh, one type of image it's great at working with. If you're already pretty familiar with the pen tool then using it should be pretty easy for something like this but if you're pretty new with it um, I'll try to explain the basics of using the pen tool. So I'm gonna zoom in close enough here and this image is, is pretty big. I think this is the huge size that they have for download and when you click your first point 
that's the initial point the next line is going to draw from. And so if I follow along here, I can just go up the side of the building most of the way and then add a point. And so you see it automatically drew a line from that first point down to the bottom. And I'm not too worried about if, if the edge isn't perfect. Uh, most of the time, uh, when you put this into something else, or you add a new background, you won't really be able to tell too much that you took off, say, a couple pixels off the edge. So I'm going to come in, I'm going to add another point up here. And so you can see it automatically creates another point from that one to this one. And so as, as you keep going, it'll just continually adding points. And my goal is to get all the way back around and then connect to that first point to create a, a closed path. So I'm going to zoom in once again, and I'm going to kind of come in here and create a couple little points on that inlet in the top of the building here. And I'm just going to ignore this piece up here for now. Now we have a curve in what we're trying to select. And I don't want to create just a straight line. So when you create a point with the pen tool, if you click and hold and start dragging, you see these little handles come out at the side of the point that you you just created. And what that basically does is create a curve in the path. So you, as you can see, that curve gets uh, more pronounced as I drag these handles out further. So the, the wider they go, the, the stronger the curve gets. I just want to kind of match it with the top edge of that building. And usually on a smooth curve, this handle will automatically fall along the contour that this side is already along. So I can just come down here, point that we just created, you can see it's affecting this drag here, which helps makes a nice curved line really easily. And now I have a little problem. If I just try to drag this down, it's going to mess up my curve on the top there. So to fix that, you get it about to the spot where you want, and you can hold Alt. And now I can drag this other handle and do whatever I need to with it. So I can kind of point it down. Or alternatively, if I just want to get rid of the second handle altogether, if I hold Alt and click on my point with the pen tool, it'll get rid of that second handle. And now I can start clicking in here and continue along with my building. So I'm going to come in and... And for this side, there's a lot of little inlets, which I'm not going to go through them all. I'm just going to very quickly do this top. and just kind of go along and then I'm going to go all the way down to the bottom because it would it would take me quite a while to uh, select each of those little um, windows and now that I'm down here I can come back across and close my path so you saw there uh, the pen next to the pen a little circle appears that means you're going to close that path and now I'm ready to create my selection. So all you have to do with that is have your pen tool selected or or one of your path tools over here. And then you saw there when I right clicked it brought up this new window. Now I can make a selection. And I want my feather radius at zero. And then usually you want anti-alias done. And that'll just try to smooth out any uh, rough edges in your selection. All right, and now all I have to do is hit Control J, and I have that building extracted from the background. That just about does it for this tutorial. In the next one, we'll be taking a look at photoshopping images into another. Thanks for watching.